this is the easiest way to create agents without code in a flexible, fast manner. And this is pretty mind blowing and way better than other alternatives that are currently available. I will show you in a minute how we can implement this, how you can implement this, although it's very easy. It's basically the Microsoft Autogen group chat playground. It's in the hugging space, hugging face space. Before I dive into how you can use this, I, I want to show you an awesome resource that the Autogen team has published. And this is how I found out about this playground. Uh, the Autogen team published something that is called the gallery, which is a page that contains a list of demos that use Autogen in various applications from the community. I found out about this page from the Discord channel of the Autogen team, which I highly recommend that you check out because they have many interesting developers, many different builders contributing, sharing issues that they are facing and sharing ideas and projects. Long story short, this gallery is very interesting because there are different use cases, different type of code that you can use. Some also build applications and front-end UI. Um, I highly recommend that you check this out and like go into all of the alternatives. Um, the alternative, I mean, the project that caught my attention is the Autogen Playground, which is this thing on the Hugging Face website. You don't need to clone any repository. You don't need to install anything. You can just come here. I will enlarge the screen. You enter the model name, which in my case, I want to use GPT-4. So GPT-4 11.06 preview, you add your OpenAI API keys. You write the OpenAI base URL, which is this one, HTTPS API OpenAI.com slash V1. This is the API key that I've used. Obviously I'm going to revoke it after the recording. The next step, is you come here and you just start creating agents. It's as simple as that. Um, let's say Yaron, a builder and team leader. This is me and this is a user proxy agent. Now I give a name copywriter. You are a direct response copywriter with expertise in creating attention having headlines for YouTube videos. This guy is going to be an assisted agent, although you can choose from different type of agents. So you can use a, a vision agent. You can use a math user proxy agent. Each agent, each type of agent has different pros and cons. Uh, you have the retrieval uh, user proxy agent. For now, we will just keep it simple by using the user proxy agent. So for the time being, we have two agents. And our use case, I didn't mention this, is creating YouTube scripts and YouTube headlines. So let's also have another agent. Let's say script writer. You are an experienced YouTube videos script writer specializing in value and booking viewers okay. long watch time. And Brandy, you are a branding ex expert focusing on long term thinking and pretty savvy short term thinking. 
Okay, so these are, let's say these are the agents, although I could, could have added many more. Now you can select how you want the speakers to rotate. So one way is randomly, they can randomly rotate. The other way is round robin, which is basically each one of the agents speaks in their turn and the alternative is automatically, which I think makes more sense. By the way, you have down here, you have um, examples and soon we will also have the code. Now the next step would be run code. So we set up everything. This is going to be an assistant agent as well. We hit this toggle button. Now send message. Hi, I want you to help me with creating a script and line for a YouTube video I'm doing about basic about GitHub 101. I want to teach non-tech people about how to use GitHub. Okay, this is a video that I want to do soon, so I, let's see if the agents deliver on what I need. Might short or shorten or accelerate the creation of this next video. So we hit the send button. Incorrect API provided. You can find your API key. Okay, so I probably added the wrong API. Let's see, it's all good. I think I copied and pasted the base code instead of the API key. Okay, this looks better. Let's run the code. Start again. Incorrect API key. You can find your API key. Okay. Okay. Ah, this is the wrong API. This is the API that I already revoked. Okay. My bad. Okay. This this should work now. Awesome. Yes. Hey, I want you to help me with creating a script and headline for a YouTube video I'm doing about GitHub 101. I want to teach non-tech people how to use GitHub. Now it is supposed to generate the responses. Now what's nice about this is the fact that it's also generating the code for us here. You can see agent name Yaron, a builder and team leader, and you have copywriter and the system message, and you have scriptwriter and brandy. So the cool thing about this is it also creates the code for us on the back end, so we can actually then go and if we'd like to modify this in Visual Studio Code, we can pretty much copy this text and modify it on the back end. Now it's supposed to be working. It worked well before. Let's see why it isn't working. Are you stuck? It's probably due to the fact that I had these hiccups, but let's see. Let's refresh this. Let me just copy these because otherwise it's going to be a hassle rewriting them. Okay, let's refresh. Should work. I mean, it worked before. So maybe the fact that I added wrong credentials, the, the wrong API keys kind of made this go, to, go south. The downside of this, of the hugging face, is that we are using the space and it's not as if we're using 
things locally and I often like using stuff locally, but on the other side, on the other hand, it was so fast to get going. As you saw, you don't have to do anything. So this is the benefit, especially when you're just testing out and you want to test different use cases, or maybe you want to build the code of the agents because the Autogen repository is updating very often. And just a few weeks ago, they changed how they structure um, the code. So creating multi-agent conversations has changed. So you couldn't use the old code. So this was the these are the this is the upside of using something like this, which is well maintained or hosted, and then it keeps on hope. I mean, ideally, it stays updated. Okay, now let's do this correctly. API base, API key. And this auto Yaron a builder and YouTuber. Let's zoom copywriter. Mm -hmm. Add two agents. Brandy. Branding expert. Okay, and we are good to go. That was fast. Let's see. Can you help me with writing a, vid a YouTube video script, a box, quotes long about? how non-tech people can start using GitHub. That's it. Let's see. Oh, again, I chose the wrong API. Oh my God. How stupid am I? <laughs> Let's see if it works. It might not work. We might need to do this again. Bear with me. If not, I'm just going to edit this out. Let's see. I think I will redo this. Okay, another thing that is Sometimes the downside with all these uh, new repositories that they are not uh, stable and they have, in many edge cases, when you have one error, it completely ruins everything. And this is a, an example of, a, I mean, an edge case that I'm not sure that they handled. If someone has a wrong API key, so what happens, why they should in, ideally allow you to reset everything and restart without refreshing the space. But again, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying this is part of the game. When you're trying out new technologies, there are downsides and there are upsides like anything in life. Not to get too philosophical, let's uh, wait for this to get loaded. In the meantime, um, I will share with you that I'm going to record a video about Microsoft Power Automate Desktop and an automation, a social selling automation that I've built over there. This is something more robust, uh, something that I've already solved in opposing to just testing out new technologies. I'm kind of thinking of to go in two vectors in my YouTube channel. One vector would be showing you stuff that I've already done. It is already robust, which is related to automations in the B2B space and also e-com related stuff. 
because this is like the majority of my experiences from those worlds. And the other vector would be testing out new technologies and being on the cutting edge, on the bleeding edge, because I'm also fascinated by, by all these things. And since I love automating, whenever I see a use case that I can actually leverage into my daily work life, I will definitely make make it a point to implement it. I will try to diversify this type of videos. So on one hand, I enjoy testing out new, new technologies, but on the other hand, I also want to keep it practical and related to the use cases. So I'm going to come up with my own use cases, things that I actually want to solve in my daily life. And if you guys have any ideas regarding other use cases, feel free to let me know and we can test them out together. Let's do this again. Hopefully this is the last time. Shittiest um, live demo you've probably seen. If you're sticking with me, I appreciate it. This is auto. Yeah, on Builder and YouTube. Copywriter. But uh, maybe maybe some, some of you enjoy this behind the scenes, more of a streaming style and not and not you know fully edited may, may even the opposite or in which I'm also mumbling a lot and thinking a lot and encountering issues and challenges which is more like real life stuff. So maybe some of you enjoy this. The data will will tell. Anyway, I think we're good to go. We chose the new API key. We added the model. We added the base model URL. Added all agents. Let's do this. Help me write a YouTube script. The box falls long about GitHub. Common people. Simple overview about what is GitHub. Okay, let's hit the send button. That's crazy. Invalid API key. Oh my God. This is a joke. I should have validated it. Another mistake. This is crazy. Ah, I see that they have a rerun button. Let's see what happens now. It might be stuck. It's crazy. Oof. Yes, let's do this again. Last time. I'm not sure if I'm going to edit this or not. Validating is so important. Yeah, but while I'm streaming, maybe I will show you something nice that I just did. for my automation, my Power Automate automation. Yeah, so basically I want to scrape group members of a Facebook groups, of a Facebook group which contains my prospects. If you guys are not familiar with this uh, Chrome extension, which is called Instant Data Scraper, 
it's one of the most powerful tools for scraping. It's 100% free and it's requires zero tech knowledge. You just go wherever you want and you can start scraping and then export it to an Excel file. Let me show you an example while this is loading. And this could be a teaser for tomorrow or the next video when I will share with you like more robust solution that I built. So let's say I want to scrape e-com merchants from this group. Just click this button and there you go. You have this basically this table. You can say start crawling and it's going to start crawling infinite uh, scroll because this is the mechanism that is being used in in Facebook although it also knows how to handle pagination as you can see it crawls all the members of this group I mean after scraping approximately 2000 users um, it crashes I don't know if it's something on Facebook end or on this on this Chrome extension end but yeah you finish the crawling and then you see here we scrape eight pages and we collected 154 rows so these are all prospects that I'm going to classify later on in my automation but this is how I source the leads I can just you can see here the profiles this is an example of a profile you can just hit this and you have all these uh, prospects on profiles on the data. You have their names, the URL, when did they join, their location, etc. Let's see if this finished loading. Okay. Last time, if if this doesn't work, it, I don't know what I'll do. I mean, this means I'm too tired or something. Yesterday I went to bed really late. So maybe it's because of that. Okay. Validating. The whole idea is learning from mistakes. So we validated. Let's add. Brandy. Copywriter, scriptwriter, and you're on. Okay, we validated everything. Auto brandy. Now we hit the run button. This, where is my prompt? Never mind, I can rewrite it again. It's help me with writing. Okay. Let's see. It is a post wall. This is a full code. If it doesn't work, I want to give up, but it's going to be pretty annoying. It didn't throw an error, which is a good thing. But it is taking too long before it worked way faster for me.
Let's copy this file. No idea why this isn't working. It won't work here as well because I didn't add the API keys. Maybe if we change the model. Let's try this one. Crazy. Request timed out, okay. We have this, we have this, everything is fine. Okay, thank God something happened here. Okay. Title. I don't, I don't even know what happened. Title, the script writer wrote, Title, Unleashing the Power of GitHub, Beginner's Guide to Collaboration and Innovation. Introduction. Host, welcome back to our channel where we explore the latest tech trends and tools that can transform your life. Today, we're diving into the world of GitHub, a powerful platform that revolutionized collaboration and innovation. Segment one, understanding GitHub. Segment two, collaboration made easy. Segment three, show, showcasing your work. Segment 4, Open Source and Innovation. Segment 5, Learning Resources. Segment 6, Security and Version. And the conclusion. Now, Brandy answered. This script, the script provided is approximately 400 long. To reach the desire, which is incorrect. To reach the desired 1200 word count, you can expand on each segment by providing more. Although this is not 200 words, so... Maybe this is like just the outline. And including additional tips and insights. Remember to maintain a conversational tone and keep the content engaging for non-tech viewers. Okay, so this was written by scriptwriter. I'm so excited that this is actually working and it was a fluke. This is a, I, I don't even know what I did because it's a bit choppy, the, the whole UI. I think it's because I changed to the GPT 3.5. Okay, so copywriter wrote this. Welcome back to our channel where we explore the latest track trends. Let's see. I don't think there is a major difference in what they did. Thank you. Reply terminative. Okay. You won't give chat. I want something better. Give more examples. Make it more. Technical. Okay, let's see. Now it seems like the task is done. Please start a new task. So, probably what I did now is giving the initiation 
of the message of KLC. Mastering Git, a comprehensive guide to pull, push, branching, and more. Welcome back to our channel. This is the script writer. Understanding Git basics, Git pull, Git push, branching in Git. Now Brandy, what, what's the difference between what Brandy did and what script writer did? Understanding Git basic, Git pull. Let's see Git push. I don't see a major difference. Okay, copywriter added a few more elements of copy. Level up your coding skills. Supercharge your local repository. Share your brilliance with the world. Conquer complexity with ease. Mastering merge challenges. Okay, this is nicer. Good luck. Thank you. Reply terminate to finish. You're welcome. If you have any more questions or need further assistance, feel free to just reply. Task is done. Okay, so in this case, each one of the agents is able to add the terminate, which I'm not sure that I really like, because then, as you can see, they terminated, although I don't think that task is done, is done in my view. And this is something that is easier to handle. I mean, we have the ability to say if we want to intervene in every response or not. I think that this can be solved probably by going the round robin route, also offering better prompts, like in the system actually tell them to avoid telling the word terminate, which is in this case, the word that terminates the code or the production of the, the actions of the agents. Uh, probably also changing it to round robin so a few, and obviously if we have used GPT-4, it probably would have been better. But this is just one iteration and we just started out and we need to adjust. Based on these learnings in order for us to really be able to leverage these agents. Anyway, I think I'm going to start concluding this video. It was pretty long. Um, all over the show. A big mess. Um, I don't know if you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, if you want, if you enjoyed this raw type of videos in which you see me do many mistakes without editing, uh, let me know in the comment section. If you like more, you know, precise videos, please comment in the section below, write precise, and I will get the idea. Although I'm going to also analyze the data and see how many of you dropped off and how many of you, and how many of you persisted for the whole video. And based on this analysis, I will improve my next videos, my upcoming videos. Anyway, that's it for today. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, keep on automating.